It's around three years ago. I was in my professional playing career and really had a deep conversation with some people about the Baltimore soccer community and professional soccer in Baltimore. At the time, there was not an option for a player to advance themselves professionally through soccer in Baltimore. We wanted to give an opportunity to players that are locally here to Baltimore and want to play at the next level. The professional landscape within Baltimore over the years, I mean, I go back to what I was told, you know, prior to I being born back in my dad's area, era, the Pompeii Soccer Club produced many legends that have come out of this area. And I'm very proud of that, that era during that point in time. Then you go into the 60s and the Baltimore Bays came alive. They played at Memorial Stadium. They were bringing international teams over. People will remember the biggest game being Pelé coming over with his club team and playing there. They were bringing teams over. I believe our team was the West End team and they were renaming it to Baltimore Bays and they were playing internationally at that time. People like Dennis Fowler was on that team. The local player that was represented was Joey Speca. At the end of the Baltimore Bays, there were the Baltimore Comets, and then there was a bit of a lull in the outdoor, and that's when the Baltimore Blast came to fruition in 1980. And indoor soccer thrives in this city from that period of time to the present, 2016. And you think about different, you know, throughout, whether it's NFL football where we lost the Colts or baseball teams moving, basketball teams moving. We've had indoor soccer in that same arena in Baltimore since 1980, which is very impressive. The Baltimore Bays came back in existence in the 1990s, owned by Bill Wallace, competed in the USISL. USISL at that point in time had all the best players in the country because there was no MLS. You know, they had the Brian McBride, Jason Kreese, and people like that were playing in the league, and it was a very strong league. Uh, and Baltimore was, was represented and played many years in that. Baltimore Bays also played indoor in the USISL. You know, and then of course the MLS came along. You know, teams came in within the DC area, but we have not gotten a team within the MLS. But what continues to thrive is our indoor game in the blast. I really decided to take on the job because I felt like it was my chance. This was my opportunity to really make a difference and, you know, do something for the good of soccer in the area. Um, a lot of people are always talking about, um, you know, trying to bring professional socks to areas. Here they come rolling in. We're going to have a technical line drill going on. The guys are going to be working with the ball, doing a lot of two touch, one touch, ball in the air type movements. Then we're, going to, then we're going to move a group over into the passing drills, moving, doing a lot of two touch around the cones, playing, follow your passes. Then you move through the cones and finish at the lacrosse nets. You know, people are watching you all. Whether you believe it or not, they want to know what we're doing. And with, with a gift comes a curse, guys. It, it, it's always good and bad with it. So it's, it's, it's how you guys carry yourselves when you walk out of here, when you walk out of the parking lot. People are looking at your shirt. They're going on a website. They're trying to figure out what we're doing. Okay. Ew. <laughs> it's a mic, man. Yeah, a microphone. But other than that, other than that, I would like to say it was a good practice. Okay. With that being said, I will be selecting uh, 18 guys for Sunday's game. Um, Josh and I, Kutai, Dominic, um, and the other coaches that have been out here are all going to sit down and you know, discuss what, what we see. Um, I know it's tough, you know, with you know 60 guys, but a lot of you guys know where you fall. When we first 
we're talking about bringing a professional club to Baltimore. We, I mean, obviously when you first do anything, it's okay, you need a good name. You need something that stands out, something that's different, that hasn't been done, but also something that relates to the local community, to the Baltimore area. We wanted to originally name the team the Baltimore Blues. Uh, we thought blue fought, felt in well with the, the blue collar workers in Baltimore, the Maryland Blue Crab, and just the overall concept of the Chesapeake Bay. And this is just a color that we thought was kind of cool and, and something that we wanted to pursue. We looked into other options as well and thought about the most popular nickname for Baltimore is Charm City. And someone once said, wouldn't it be cool if we were the, the kings of Charm City? And it kind of resonated with me really well. Instantly it was like a yes moment. And uh, we decided to go with that route, kings of Charm City. Hines has been a great character. He's reached out to me multiple times, you know, before and after practice, you know, just trying to talk to me, you know, get to know me a little bit better, asking me, you know, what he should work on and, you know, just trying to reach out about extra opportunities to get, you know, get fitness in and get training in and whatever he can do, you know, he's going to show up. I know he will. And, you know, Josh came and told me that, you know, he was, you know, wanted to work with the marketing team. He wanted to do photography at King's Fest. He wanted to, you know, come to extra training. And, you know, I knew if I, you know, made it available to guys like Hans, they would show up, they would be there. I guess I started at around eight, started playing rec soccer. So I've been playing for about 10, 11 years now. <laughs> Obviously, like I said, I started to rec and then moved up to travel. Um, yeah, I went to travel, then I started, I, was, I played high school, I played in school, and I started to think about what I really wanted to do, and I wanted to be a professional player, and so I started to take that route, and straight out of high school, I started to go into professional tryouts, and the Kings was one of them, and fortunate enough for me, I was selected, so... You know, this is an extra opportunity for them to, uh, you know, advance themselves along. And, you know, if guys are spending money, you know, to train over the summertime, then, you know, there's got to be something about the program and, 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 and soccer in general that's just making more people want to push. And if I have a hundred people coming to my soccer trials that I've never met before, then, you know, obviously there are people out there that are trying to do more and trying to learn more about the game and, you know, advance themselves along. And they're just looking for opportunities, just like I was when I got this coaching opportunity. We didn't talk about sponsorships until about this spring when we first just had the idea and we made a uh, marketing deck for sponsorships. At that time, six months ago, um, the goals and views we had for the club were completely different. Originally, all we wanted was a U23 guys team and in 2017 a pro team. But it kind of grew and blew up more than we thought. Now we have five youth teams, we have a guys team, we have a girls team, we have a semi-pro futsal team. So at that time, um, you know, we didn't necessarily have our eyes on and our concentration on stuff like that yet. We were more focused on tryouts for the U23 team and how we can just spread knowledge of the Baltimore Kings without a marketing program. It was event-based. They play the game and get paid to play. Um, players that were out of college and maybe by that, maybe by getting video highlights of them, maybe by being put on this stage, it may offer them a trial or an opportunity somewhere bigger and better. A good group of players is nice for when people are come to see successful what we're doing. And uh, I think you can find players in what we're doing. And I think you turn that over, you can find some good players, turn it over to coach and make that successful in the field. But that's not just, you know, having a good team isn't just gonna be, and then people are gonna come. It's not building, they will come. That's not it. You got you got to work it in what we're doing. So you got to do you got to do those other things. You got to worry about spending time. And you talk about marketing. It's hard because initially, when you think about marketing, you think about buying marketing, buying media. You don't have the money to buy. It. So it's grassroots marketing. You got to get involved in grassroots marketing, out in the community, grassroots, one on one meeting with people. What we're doing. You gotta grind it out. EJ decided very early on in his career to stop playing and focus more on coaching. And I saw some of the projects that he ran here in the local Baltimore community and really saw the way he conducted himself and the projects he was trying to run 
were very well ran and he had passion that was unmatched and someone that I just knew that I had to talk to and wanted close by near me in the process of expanding. I got a game on Sunday, all right? Some guys, like I'm saying, you're telling me this, telling me that. Play the game, okay? There's plenty of space. Just move the ball, okay? It should be quick, boom, 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 boom. Two guys, too many guys are taking too many touches. And another thing, the guys on the outside are sleeping, okay? Which is like this. That's the type of work rate we're looking for. Because if I have 17 guys that work really hard and one guy that doesn't, then that one guy is going to interrupt all the players and the rest of the guys that Regardless how you look at it, regardless whether you're the best soccer player ever, you don't feel like working today, let's go. This is my favorite part. We selected the team, we got our 18 guys. It's very anxious, anxious waiting for uh, for Sunday at this point. Everybody just wants to play a game. Everybody wants to get something in. Um, but uh, I think they're all excited. They're ready to play. They understand, which is cool. Um, I felt like that was going to be the hardest thing about this whole situation, but we're starting to understand. I told you, you, man. You guys were like, okay, okay. I'm like, yo, dude, this kid's like legit. I thought we had a good showing, um, you know, not the result we were looking for, but I saw some things that I really, really enjoyed um, watching. Um, 
as far as keeping possession, you know, I already knew we were going to be great at that. I think it was just exploiting and finding that final thing uh, going forward in the, in the attacking half is what we're looking for. I think the guys played well. Um, I think, sure enough, through the back, we were okay. The goalie played unbelievable. Carlos played great for us in the second half. Um, so I think behind the ball, we're, we're looking okay. I think it's just a repetition of, you know, creating opportunities and getting guys in positions they want to score. So I knew it was going to be a great show in the first, first half. But in the second half, we just, you know, we're just going to get it out. This is okay. Um, something we're going to look forward to over the next uh, games, and uh, that's what we're looking to build for over this time. Oh, going forward, yeah, I know what I need to do, and obviously I'll go and I'll, I'll support my team because you know they're all we're all the same team. So even if I don't get selected, I'm going to keep trying my hardest, keep training hard, working hard, going to sessions every day, and uh, you know. Playing for the next. I think I think that you know there's still a lot that I need to improve on, as well as the team. So I come out to train and you know to make myself better. You know I'm not gonna, I guess, lose hope just because of one game. So I'm gonna keep my hopes up and uh, stay focused on what I should be doing. And yeah, come come to training, work hard. You know. Keep doing my thing. Hopefully, I can select it this week and next coming weeks. So I still have a lot of room for improvement. And go! Switch! 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 Come on, play, play, play! Switch, get through, get through! Come on! Let's go! Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing! Why would, why would you run if your teammates aren't? Is that fair to you? What? Alright! Person hustle is great, no? But when you lose the game because you're the only one running, doesn't that suck? We lose it, everybody needs at the ball. We hunt as a pack, we win it all, we win the ball back, or six seconds. Hey boys, hey, go get a drink. Go get a drink. I feel pretty good. My arms hurt a little bit. Um, I don't want to do push-ups too much. That's something I need to work on. But uh, it was a very intense practice. Coach Joe um, did a lot of a lot of defensive pressure. I mean, like he said, we were going to focus on transitioning to the defensive side. And uh, a lot of good work out today from the guys. Um, I, I see some guys got a little bit tired throughout the mid middle of the session, but um, we got back into it. Once we got into that three-team possession, it was really good. And we worked on the, uh, the six, six second swarming on the ball, and I think that worked really well. I don't need you coming all the way to the time in the ball. That's what you That, that's what we do. Play him, play him, play him. That's the goal. That's the goal. Let's go! Yeah. Let's go! Yeah. Hey, folks! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go.
setting out to have the highest quality product, but the fact that we won the league that we played in was just a bonus. Um, we wanted to really focus on the way that the players were treated. We wanted to use this as an experiment going into next year and seeing exactly what players respond to, what we can learn, and how we can get better from each situation going forward. I'm happy with the way the summer went. As far as you know, settling in here, and the way the season went, you know, we got to meet a great group of guys. I feel like I've gotten a lot better spending time with, um, you know, all these you know, high-level players. As far as playing, I've definitely gotten a lot better. Um, I know. I think my biggest weakness as far as playing right now would be, you know, experience, because I don't have, you know, the high-level. You know, I haven't played four years in college that hurt whatever like these guys have. And I think that's something that will obviously come with time. And, um, you know, as, as far as everything else, it's been, you know, it's, it's been great. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't really ask for a better opportunity, especially at this age. I don't think the motivation is gonna change at all. Um, I've been pretty motivated this past summer. And like I said, I've, I've worked hard um, I'm still working hard and, you know, throughout this fall will be kind of a crucial point for me um, as far as, you know, where I want to be next year. So right now I'm just going out and just seeing guys that I've been coaching um, and I'm able to go watch some of the college games and watch the high school kids that I was coaching and some of them have transferred to other schools. Uh, I got a one kid named Antonio that plays at Calvert Hall and he's on the freshman team so I'm going to go check his games out. It was overwhelming how many people wanted to be involved a lot more than we originally expected. And we tried to find ways to accommodate a lot of these players. I'm gonna go uh, watch the college game when David Warburton's playing against Camden Cook and Loyola's high point. Or, you know, just, you know, or York versus Stevenson and get to see Eric Dorsey versus Joel Teston and, and Matt Freebaum. So I get to like go out and then I'll get to like see them after the games and I'll get to interact with them. And, you know, that stuff to me is going to go a long way because then they're going to realize that I really do care about these players. Like, I want to see them perform well, and if they know I'm there, they will play well because they know that their, their coach is there, somebody that, that's been helping them, you know, get along and gain these opportunities. Um, that's what I've been, you know, looking forward to doing. So I'm, I'm staying away from the coaching right now. I do have a U16 Kings team, that, but then most of those kids are playing in high school too. So... We'll see what happens when, uh, you know, once November starts rolling around and everybody looks start looking for a team again. I'm thinking about going to a couple pro trials just so I, you know, take a shot maybe. And so I know where I stand right now in the big scheme of things. Um, yeah, I think that would be a good idea for me, but you know, it's depending on my scheduling and how busy I am, you know, that all, hopefully fit into place. You know, I think what the Kings are about, they're not really, they you know, they don't want to tie, you know, tie a player down or nothing like that. And if there's a better opportunity somewhere else, I think they'll support me. And if by chance, at any point, I do go to another organization, um, I know, I know Josh, EJ, and these guys, whoever they bring in in the next couple seasons will support me through that. And, you know, I'll, I'll never forget 
you know, where I started going forward, I will not be as hands-on. There is a lot more that needs to be done um, behind the scenes, not just our product. Our, our, everything can improve. Everything that we're doing can improve, make it better. So your question was, what can we do to be better? Everything. If you could say, you know, something to EJ and to Josh, just about what they've done for you and the other players, if you could just sum it up in a few words, what would that be? Josh has done for me something that I've always dreamed that somebody would just come and see whatever it is that I was doing. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, they've they've given me more now than you know I've ever had before. I think he sees in me what I didn't see before I really met Josh. Um, because now that somebody's actually given me an opportunity to do something, and now that I see how important and how much it means, um, and, and still he's still giving us opportunities, I can't thank him enough, um, you know, for the you know the, the generosity and the, the things that he does, and he tries to do it like he like he tries to do it and not tell anybody about it, but you know I I always talk him up and I'm asking people if they know who he is and you know that he's the guy that you know really does this and I'm always giving him praise and because he you know I love him I care you know I care about him and his daughter and you know he's a good person he's a good family person and you know I, I, I model myself to be around somebody like that. EJ's been a great coach, friend, so is Josh. Josh more on the business side of things. They've both got me in contact with different people um, showed me a lot of different things that I didn't know that can make me better as a player and as a person. They've given me a lot of countless opportunities and um, you know there's nothing more I could ask for from them. I just hope that um, I can return the favor for these guys with you know the way I play and you know every, so every, they know everything you know they've worked for and what we've worked for really have paid off. You know, moving forward into next year, we're just interested in what this pro team is going to be like. And that's really what this whole big picture has been about this whole time. It hasn't even really been about the U23 team, but it's been about the whole process and development of what we have to structure what's going to be behind our pro team to that. If somebody tries to, you know, play us and, you know, we're in season, we have a developed structure where we can outlast. And, and go on and, and, and move players into other situations. And that's what the pro team is gonna be there for so that we can get exposure against other teams. And that's what's gonna help you be able to build a culture. Our approach to putting a team here in Baltimore is to take the proper steps in building a fan base, having people support what we're doing, being able to present a product through the independent model before actually making that jump. We've looked into different leagues and we know the statistics and the financials behind each one. But with our model, we want to make sure that we have Baltimore's backing before just throwing a team together.